All right, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to Train World's Facebook Live, the biggest Facebook Live event tonight, the Virtual York Manufacturers event. Um, we have a exciting, stellar, the titans of the industry event tonight. We have Lionel, MTH, Atlas, Bachman Williams, and also my father, Ken Sr. How is everybody doing? We're doing, We're doing great. great. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to just go one by one and introduce everyone. And uh, I guess to the uh, left of my screen is Ryan Kunkel. How you doing, Ryan? If you want to introduce yourself. Very good. Uh, hi, everybody out there in uh, virtual land. Uh, Ryan Kunkel, uh, Director of Production at Lionel Trains. Happy to be on here and sharing the York experience any way we can this year. Very cool. And uh, below you, you got uh, Jarrett. Kenny, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. I am the uh, Chief Operating Officer and one of the owners at Atlas. Excited to be on here and uh, looking forward to this uh, virtual live event with you all. Very cool. And uh, we got the tag team duo. Uh, watch out. It's a one-two punch over there at MTH. Yeah. Hi, Kenny. Rich and Andy here. We're not good enough to do this solo, so we got to <laughs> <we gotta, laughs> do it together. It's all good, though. It's all good. We get along somewhat, so we've known each other for a long time, so it's okay. Plus, he showered this morning, so he doesn't smell too bad. <laughs> and I put on the aqua velvet, too. Excellent. So. Is you. that Appreciate six it. feet in between you? In, indeed. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> six feet, I think. I mean, you know, it's good enough. Close Very enough good. for me. <laughs> Very good. And we also got Larry. How you doing, Larry? Doing good, Ken. How's everybody doing? All right. I'm, I'm the uh, VP of Product Development at Bachman. Cool. Also, I, Will, Williams trains for uh, the O-Scalers out there. Started with Williams and then transitioned to Bachman once they purchased the company, yes. Okay. Yep. And... Uh, Last but not least, my father, Ken. Hi, I'm Ken Bianco, uh, one of the owners at Train World, and uh, I seem to be getting pushed out by my son, Ken Jr., for sure. He uh, keeps putting me on the sidelines. I had to force my way in tonight. I don't know what took him so long, Kenny. <laughs> well, well, it was uh, a guest appearance, so I uh, hope you guys enjoy, enjoy the commentary from my father. <laughs> uh, one, one other thing I got to say, I believe trains is an essential business, without a doubt. They should have made us stay open. Closing us is not a good thing. Yeah, I tried that argument here in Maryland, and it didn't work. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Ken. Yep. And uh, so many people from all over. Uh, we have uh, South Carolina, Charleston. Uh, James Wright is in watching. Uh, Peter, uh, Scott Smith, uh, social distancing sh should be defined as 0128. That's actually a, a nice little joke. Uh, Canada, uh, people from all over. So thank you guys so much for joining. Mississippi, West Virginia, just so many states, and I, I truly believe and know this will be the biggest Facebook event um, ever for Model Train so far. So we appreciate everyone joining in. I know there's a lot of football fans out there, and uh, uh, we appreciate you skipping the draft for us. So uh, glad you're picking trains for us, and we're going to kick it off right and MTH is going to start and i'm not sure if it's going to be andy or rich but i believe it will be a surprise so uh one of them what do you guys got for us well kenny I, first thing i want to say and i think uh, i speak for andy and i think the rest of the uh, people on this show is thank you guys at train world for putting this on it's uh i watched your show last night i thought it was great i couldn't help but comment a few times <laughs> and uh that said, I, I think the industry owes you guys a thumbs up for what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it is a good thing. I think it's uh, also, frankly, all of the you know, social distancing, the working from home, all of that stuff. Um, 
I think it's teaching us a different way to do things. And this is a good example of how it can happen because we, we don't know what will happen down the road. You know, will we be seeing any other shows? I know you're doing one for um, the National Train Show in July because that event's also canceled. And uh, I guess uh, Ryan, uh, Lionel's canceled the LCCA or they canceled their convention. So, you know, it's the nature of the beast right now and uh, incorporating this technology and getting everybody to be able to see what's going on uh, and talk to everybody via Facebook. I think it's it's a good yeah, thing absolutely. in that respect. Without a doubt. Thank you, guys. And uh, just with this whole coronavirus, it's this is just another way for you guys to Keep trains on your mind and run trains in the basement. Stay safe. Uh, stay home. So we, we really hope tonight's presentation gives you some uh, much-needed entertainment. And Rich and Andy are the uh, dynamic duo over there. So I am sure they will not disappoint you guys. So what do you guys have for us? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, it's York Week. And what does MTH usually do at York Week? Well, we, we put on... Uh, a catalog. We put out a catalog. Well, guess what? We didn't put out a catalog yet. It was ready to go online tomorrow. We were going to show some some uh, things out of it. We will show some things out of it, but Mike blew it all up the other day, and uh, it's going to come out the week of the, of the 3rd, May 3rd, uh, assuming he doesn't blow it up again. Uh, he, I don't know why he waited till the last minute, but that's, that's you know, that's his prerogative. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have the, the catalog to show people. Uh, there is a cover of it, uh, so you can see that. And um, obviously that's the Reading T1. So I guess we're making a Reading T1. And, um, uh, you know, the bottom line is when, when it comes out, it'll be online uh, probably Wednesday the 6th. Um, we'll keep people apprised of that. Uh, if it doesn't come out on the 6th, it'll be the 9th or the, not the 9th, the 8th, that Friday. So I'm shooting for either Wednesday or Friday of, um, of May. Uh, it'll go to press on, on Wednesday, I believe. And at that point, uh, mailing should happen the week of the, let's see, let's see, third, uh, second, ninth, 17th, something like that, uh, probably toward the latter part of that week. And uh, order closings will be at the end of June. So hopefully the stores are back up. People can get their orders in uh, for that catalog. Now, that said, um, we do have uh, some particular item in there that got a lot of uh, fanfare on your uh, broadcast with Mike Wolf a couple of weeks ago, Kenny, and that would be the um, the election stuff that we have been doing or talking about doing, and um, that uh, has changed a little bit from what you saw um, and what Mike showed you, Mike and I showed you, um, uh, to what it's going to actually look like, and what I'm talking about is a Trump train and a Biden train that was not discussed during um, the uh, the Facebook Live broadcast. So those two things um, are a little bit different than uh, what uh, you guys saw when, uh, when it came out. So here's the Trump train, engine and caboose. Rich, take it away. Yeah, it's an engine and caboose set with uh, charging lights. And um, both, both sets will have uh, charging lights under the ES-44. And it's a rail king scale. Rail imperial. Yeah, or imperial. Uh, imperial. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the reasons we didn't have the Biden train at the time you interviewed uh, Mike was that I think that was the same day that uh, Bernie Sanders dropped out. So at that point, we felt pretty comfortable doing both. So um, anyway, both will be out in around July. And um, you can, you know, if you politics junkie, pick your choice, have at it. And it's not just um, the engine and caboose for both the, both candidates. There'll also be other cars uh, that will be included in the catalog, uh, quite a slew of them. So you'll be able to build your own Trump train or your own Biden train. Oh, yes. Yeah, one other thing. There's going to be um, the sound uh, set in each one will be uh, speech quotes and stuff from rallies and, and campaign rallies and things of that nature. So that might appeal to some folks. I will say the graphics, uh, the new graphics are a lot nicer than the old one. So I think people are going to be really happy. And we already got a ton of orders on these. So I expect with the new release of the new picture, uh, a lot more will come in. 
Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty pumped up about it. So far, the advanced orders just from the event that uh, you and Mike did uh, have been tremendous. So, and that's just with the retailers and the few people that, well, not, not a few, you get quite a few viewers that saw that. Uh, and I, I do think the graphics are, are quite a bit yeah, better now. And uh, in addition to the voice clips, uh, that'll be part of the ProtoSound 3 sound sets. Uh, there'll be Trump figure and a Biden figure in the cabs of uh, each engine. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be kind of cool. We're, we're, we're looking forward to it. And the other cars are going to be neat too. So that'll be some more reason to, to wait for the catalog to come out uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. When do you anticipate delivery on this? Uh, so these will come out in... Um, we're shooting for July. Yeah, it's got, well, that's probably going to be more like August, but um, they got to come out, uh, you know, before the election. Um, so they'll certainly be out uh, well before that. And uh, as will the other cars, they're all coinciding with our 2020 ready to run catalog uh, production of those same Rail King Imperial ES44s and cabooses. So all that production has taken place in, uh, in late June, July, and then they'll get on the water. So we should hopefully see them by the end of August, first part of September. You also got those um, the hand cars also correct in the uh, that's correct the, the hand cars that Ken Senior's talking about were in the um, ready to run catalog and they'll be featured in the uh, 2020 volume two catalog as well along with uh, all of the uh, the additional cars that we're creating artwork for so looking forward to that it's uh, our designers are hard at work right now uh, cursing me uh, well probably cursing Mike more than me um, for the for the change up on this stuff but. Uh, It'll be cool. Uh, we're looking forward to it. That's for sure. It all looks good. Also, you guys are making some uh, custom trolleys for us that will be coming out soon. Uh, uh, for the guys in New York, two Brooklyn trolleys. Um, and there's going to be a uh, Long Island trolley and a U.S. Army trolley. And um, I can't wait to see what they look like, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Ken, you know, um, you should know what they look like because your son got the images the other day, but maybe he's holding out on you. I think he was, I think he was surprised about the project to begin with. So uh, I, now I he's just, got it. So uh, throw me under the bus, Andy. All right. I, I've been uh, too busy to forward it along, but uh, I, I, Andy did send the pictures uh, yesterday but uh, it was very recent. <laughs> I, I should have put them up in this broadcast. My bad on that. So uh, I figured you guys had it under control, but you know. It's fine. Really My not. father and I were arguing who ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? One of the Brooklyn trolleys say, forget about it. Yeah, yep. it is indeed true. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So one of the other things about York is that, you know, we obviously show a lot of product and, um, uh, we'll just run through a, a couple of quick selections here of what we are going to be, well, would have been showing and what is uh, either in production or, or currently been released. Um, one in particular is um, the HO Berkshire. We've been getting a lot of um, feedback about, you know, when is this coming? Um, uh, you know, what's, what's happening with it, so on and so forth. It's in production now, should be exiting uh, first part of May, and we're looking for an arrival sometime in June. Uh, and the HO Berkshire, uh, like the most recent uh, HO steam engine releases from MTH, has a steaming quillable whistle. So there'll be smoke that comes out of the whistle, uh, triggered by either a DCC controller, uh, the DCS remote, or the premium version of the DCS app. So look for that to come out uh, in June. Uh, some, a couple of pieces that are already out uh, would be our ST70 Aces that came out um, just, uh, I guess, in February, January, February. So powered uh, by our people is a Union Pacific paint scheme. Um, this particular SD70 Ace uh, features ProtoSound 3 and a DCC decoder, so to run with any DCC controller. Uh, and the graphics on this are just spectacular uh, and also uh, have been created for both our Rail King and Premier O-Gage lines. Uh, and those have all come out as well, I believe, at this point. Yeah, I think they have both arrived and they are the, some of this engine and the engine that'll be following are two of the busiest paint schemes we've ever put on an HO piece. Yeah, they, they're, they're quite a bit to, to work with. Ryan, I think you guys are doing those as well uh, in your lines and uh, they're, they're a challenge to print, that's for sure. 
Um, the Spirit of 1943 is the other Union Pacific SD-70 Ace. This uh, took us a lot longer to get out uh, than um, most of our releases. Uh, the graphics were, were a big challenge. Once we got that kind of down, I think it, it really helped the powered buyer people to come out pretty quickly as well. So both of these engines are available. Train World has them in stock, um, as does MTH. Uh, so if you uh, patronize other MTH authorized retailers, they can order them for you. Uh, and uh, we are fulfilling orders. So folks will be able to get these uh, if, uh, if they're so inclined. And yeah, beautiful engines, beautiful paint schemes. Thank you. Uh, we, we enjoy doing them. And the HO product has done real well for us over the years. So uh, we certainly enjoy that. And you also make it in O-Gage also, the same things, right? In both the Rail King Imperial line and the Premier O-Scale line. And both are, are out. And even uh, in one gauge, we're doing the Spirit of the Union Pacific as well with, a, with matching freight cars to go behind it for each branch of the military as well. Um, so, uh, obviously, York doesn't really scream HO, um, so we, uh, we certainly like to do, uh, you know, focus a good bit on our O-gauge line there, um, and uh, certainly the Rail King is no exception to that. The Rail King uh, RS3 and SW500s uh, both um, have come out, and um, they are um, available. Uh, for sale um, through Train World, as well as our authorized retailers. You better move fast uh, on some of these, though. On the RS3s, we already sold out of the Jersey Centrals, and we don't have a lot of inventory left on, on the other ones either. So Western Maryland, Susquehanna, New Haven, and Conrail are the road names for these particular locomotives. Um, the um, uh, engines are ProtoSound 3. Uh, they'll run on um, conventional as well as in command mode using the DCS system or uh, if you're so inclined a DCC controller uh, that requires a switch that has to be installed. Um, so they're out and uh, available. Uh, pretty good looking pieces in my opinion. This Rail King engine is a Rail King scale engine, both these models. And that simply means that they're actually built to scale proportions. So they'll look quite at home with uh, any of our premier engines. Um, on the same layouts and so forth. So uh, pick them up, Train World, and any MTH authorized retailer. The, uh, the next piece is the SW1500. And uh, this also is uh, available with the exception of one road name. I think the uh, there's a steel, rail, uh, steel yeah. mill railroad, US Steel Mill. Yeah. Uh, but Norfolk Southern, Akron, Barberton, and Belt, where is that? You don't know? I don't know. Um, Canton Railroad and NASA. Uh, again, Rail King scale proportion. So these are 148 scale. Uh, they operate on 027 curves, these particular locomotives. Um, you know, some accommodations for the size. You look inside the cab window and you will see the motor, unfortunately. Uh, but aside from that, uh, great looking pieces, die cast frame, die cast truck sides and fuel tanks, pilots, protocouplers, uh, and obviously the full digital protosound three sound system with LED lighting. Yeah, Andy, sorry to interrupt you, but this is groundbreaking. We just broke a thousand people tuning in at one time. This is by far, I, I personally haven't seen this before in the model train industry, only at Trump rallies or uh, the president speaking, uh, <laughs> you know, those kind of amount of viewers watching over a thousand people. So by the time this show is done, the amount of views will be greater than all of York weekend. I mean, this is tremendous. And I just want to thank everybody out there watching this video and taking the time to watch all of these great manufacturers. These are record setting numbers. So we really appreciate it. And kudos to all these manufacturers here because they work day and night very hard and do this out of their spare time and it's past working hours. So we really appreciate you guys coming on. Sorry to interrupt you guys, but you may continue. <laughs> oh, I, Kenny, I think they're here to see you in Harrington, really. That's the, that's the deal. <laughs> well, I, I, Kenny, it's a great idea. Where, where did you even get this idea? Uh, you know what? Funny you should say, 
Andy actually had the idea to bring everyone on at one time. So Andy, kudos to you. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, it's a good thing I stole your idea. So thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I like you, man. That's why I suggested it. I wanted you to have the glory. I appreciate the little shout out, though. Thank you. <laughs> hey, well, Andy, I, gave, I gave you a shout out last time. This time I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not hurt. I'm Andy, all right. I think you should make a We the People train with the faces of you guys at Lionel, guys at MTH, at Williams, and put everybody on the train's faces there. We, we could certainly do that. Uh, but who's going to build it? <laughs> that, that's really the question so <laughs> well, somebody might monkey with you know the picture of jared on there for example put a mustache oh you've already got a mustache that won't matter so, <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh it's it's cool it's a neat idea and uh as i said at the outset i think that um uh this is something that'll happen more on a regular basis just because of the nature of this uh this uh, coronavirus thing and um, unfortunate, but uh, we have to deal with it. And this is a great way to do it. All right. So uh, proceeding on before Ryan falls asleep, um, we'll jump over to our uh, Rail King one gauge line, um, which we also like to do uh, at York. We like to bring that along. And um Rich, what do, what do we got in the Rail King one gauge? Well, we obviously uh, anxiously awaiting the Alco PAs. They're uh, going to be in Pennsylvania, Santa Fe, Santa Fe Gold Bonnet, SP and UP, and it's been a great engine for us in the uh, uh, past, and uh, it should be out in the late summer months. Uh, yeah, I think um, th uh, this particular engine uh, comes with. Uh, B units and A units, uh, so you can build, uh, you know, lash ups, not just sold separately. The Penzi is a beautiful piece for those big handrails. And by the way, these big one gauge engines, so much easier to photograph and video. I must say, I, you know, photographing HO stuff is a pain in the butt. Uh, but uh, the big G gauge is, is pretty much uh, simple to do. So I kind of like it from that perspective. Uh, there are two other engines, uh, really, really three, but two others that are coming out. One is the uh, Union Pacific Challenger, and um, this will be out uh, late in the summer, early in the fall, uh, available in a number of different UP paint schemes. Uh, this particular engine has the smoking coilable whistle, as did our big boy, which came out a um, couple of times, I think now. We've run it a couple, several yeah. times. The, it appears that you can never get tired of running big boys. People keep buying them. So. Um, this engine will, will fall in nicely with the uh, G-Gauge Big Boy um, uh, with, the, you know, all of the different features that it has. And th this is the first year that the Challenger has been run with the Protosound 3 system. So you have the ability to run this locomotive and control it with a DCC controller, which the previous version did not. Correct. And then the final piece that's uh, in production uh, for 2020 delivery would be the whoops i messed up on this sorry folks little intro there a little uh, shameless plug for mth um would be our sd70 ace this is a norfolk southern version of the engine and um brand new tooling yes brand new tooling people have been waiting on it there's multiple paint schemes that some of them are real flashy the uh Bush 4141 the up 9096 which ran with the 4141 on the uh, Bush Funeral, Norfolk Southern, BNSF, the Spirit of the UP 1943 with uh, matching cars, uh, Rio Grande, Reading, and an EMD demo scheme. And the neat thing about this particular locomotive, um, again, unlike uh, previous um, diesel releases with the exception of our Dash 8, but uh, Protosound 3, the tooling is set up so we can do different um, versions there's a snow plow that comes with it obviously led lighting cab interior figure cab interior um, and a fixed pilot option so that you can make it look even more realistic than uh, the current um, you know tight curve configuration that we've got going so uh, pretty cool from that perspective again in production now we're looking to see those engines uh, sometime uh, in july um, they should exit production 
probably by the end of May. Uh, speaking of production, I think it's important to keep people updated on that. Uh, we are in production. Things are rolling out of our factories. Uh, pretty much looking at uh, anywhere from six to eight week delays in what uh, the production schedule had um, back in October when the 2020 volume one catalog, you pretty much add two months at least to every date that was in there um, because of uh, both the combination of Chinese New Year, which happens at the end of January and the coronavirus and how that affected our factories overseas. But we do have product coming in. We've had um, shipments come in this month already and more shipments in May. Uh, we always pr promote a list of products that are coming in on the, web on the MTH website, we provide that to the dealers on Tuesdays. And so you can go to the site, uh, mthtrains.com slash news slash 001A. If you write that down, you'll always see the list of product that's coming in over the next couple of weeks. All right, so um, there you go, HO, Rail King, and Rail King 1 gauge. That leaves us with uh, two things, um, an update on our S gauge uh, goings on. We've got a catalog that we released last fall, uh, and the first engine is uh, entering production right now. That would be the NW2 switcher. I was going to shoot some video of an undecorated model, but I decided it was boring and I ran out of time. Um, so uh, we are building those now and um, they should exit probably in early June. So we're looking at uh, early August delivery. They'll be followed by the uh, SW8s and then the F7s. Um, so look for more details on that. Uh, we've got rolling stock that's going into production now as well. And we've been focusing on that with our weekly newsletter, showing people um, the different paint schemes that are coming out in the various cars. Um, so no images of that to show because like I said, I ran out of time. Uh, so that'll take us over to the um, Premier line. And in Premier, uh, let's take a quick gander at uh, something that we showed last fall on the layout. And that would have been the Kansas City Southern veteran set and all of the cars have come in. So you can now um, start to uh, build your set out, um, right? We've shipped those cars out. The cars uh, just, yes, yeah. they just got here. They're, they're pretty much shipped to anybody who had them on order. And it's a, it's a fantastic looking set when you pair that car up with that engine. It's just stunning. And um, th there is, uh, again, one car for each branch of the military and a POW MIA car, uh, as well as a caboose to match. So those are in stock now. And um, we need to, um, let me see here. We have other SD70 ACEs that are out there right now as well with the uh, uh, 9093. We are sold out of Bush engines. I'm getting a lot of calls for it, but I don't know if we're going to make it again. So we are out of the Bush engines. You may be able to find them at an MTH retailer right now. And the neat thing about this set is that it's kind of another one of those deals where um, we've got, um, you know, a series of cars going on with uh, the paint schemes that the real uh, railroads have uh, created. Uh, so here we've taken that paint scheme that was on the, uh, the SD70 Ace and uh, applied it uh, with our kind of creation, our, our little bit of, of uh, artistic endeavors uh, to uh, a series of cars and a caboose, much like we did with the spirit of uh, 1943 in both our Premier and in our Rail King line. So kind of neat from that perspective. We, we, we get a good kick out of doing that kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully the customers will as well. So these are shipping out now. They just came in. And of course, the engines are already out. Uh, so you'll be able to pick them up from Train World or any NPH authorized retailer uh, in fairly short order. Uh, next up is um, the Santa Fe E8. And I wanted to show this locomotive uh, in particular because of um, the plated finish. Uh, a lot of our locomotives, uh, I shouldn't say a lot, but in Santa Fe liveries have come with this plated finish and it's tricky to do. Uh, there's a good bit of waste, unfortunately, in the production process, uh, but they really are stunning uh, between the glossy finish and uh, the plated look. Uh, so they're not mirror-like, uh, it's more of a stainless look, uh, but darn cool looking. And uh, 
these engines are sold uh, separately as A units, B units. You can build uh, uh, lash ups uh, in both for conventional and in uh, command operation. And um, they, um, they will uh, run uh, at, at, as a unit altogether or individually, however you want to set it up. Uh, next up is the Premier SD40-2. You would see this uh, on the MTH display if we had York this week. Might even been running on the layout. Uh, available in a number of different railroads. Which ones, Rich? On the SD40s, uh, it's the uh, C uh, Chesapeake and Indiana, Ontario, Northland, Illinois Central, Chessie, and BNSF. Did you sell a lot of Chesapeake and Indiana's there, Ken? I'm guessing no. <laughs> it's a short line. <laughs> no comment. Uh, yeah, no comment. I understand. I understand. Um, but but there's one guy out there that's going to request it and say everybody will buy it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we always get that. And, uh, you know, that's okay. I mean, one of the things about railroading is, um, you know, there's tons of different paint schemes to do. And you just never know when... Uh, when somebody might jump up and and uh, go for something, so we've we've changed, by the way, um, in case you haven't noticed. And can, um, can you guys explain this? <laughs> yeah, I can explain it. Real simple. You know what we usually do on Thursdays after the show? If this was real York, you know what we'd be doing right now, this very moment. We'd all be in the back. <laughs> Indeed, we would. <laughs> in the truck, drinking in the parking lot. <laughs> you didn't even give us all warnings. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we didn't. And oh, by the way, before I forget, a toast to two longtime York uh, attendees, Barry Broskowitz and Marty Fitzhenry, who are no longer with us. So, cheers to you guys. Indeed. Indeed. So that's, that's it from us down here in the COVID-19 bunker. Uh, we've uh, survived the Rona so far, so hopefully everybody else will, will be safe. And uh, we look forward to hearing, and sorry if it took so long, guys, the, the rest of our vaunted uh, competitors here and see what you guys have to well, say. Well, I, I needed one of these beers to get through Kunkel's segment, so <laughs> carry on, you guys. Well... Well, you guys should have gave us warning with the beers. We could have all at least had participated and uh, toasted together. And, we just uh, thought of it this evening. <laughs> we, we, we did just think of it this evening. And um, keep in mind, we like to keep the industry on its toes. We, you know, we've, well, we're responsible for the ban on alcohol at York. You realize that, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's our fault. So, you know, we should have just stuck right with it. It's what we do. Well, you, you guys are fortunate. I can't, I can't ban you. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Thank you. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for that presentation. It was excellent. Excellent. And very informational. And uh, it keeps everybody up to date. What's going on now? We appreciate it. Thank you. I, I think Bud Light is also doing some Corona uh like bar room, virtual chat room or something as well. So this could be a, a segue for you guys to actually get sponsored um, <laughs> by big time corporations. We, we could we could use the infusion of cash into our personal bank accounts. <laughs> I can tell you that. So that'd be good. Very good. Well, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, MTH has you know, a tremendous amount of product, uh, different scales, HO, O, G scale. We carry it all at trainworld.com. Uh, thank you, Andy and Rich. Uh, you guys are always entertaining. So we appreciate that. And, um, but up next, we have a very special guest, um, Larry from Bachman Trains. How are you doing, Larry? Oh, well, Ken, how are you doing tonight? All right. So what do you guys have for us today? Well, I'm here in my home in Maryland. Um, luckily, we had the show that happened in Denver, and we had that stuff shipped back to the show in Maryland that didn't happen in Timonium. And so I got all the trains in my house right now. So uh, I have uh, enough to set up a booth right now. So um, basically, I'm going to go through a little bit of everything. We had um, 
the only thing different about me being in work is now I'm doing it here and I have the samples coming in um, for review and doing things I always do. So, so uh, just, just getting on, um, not getting on each other's nerves here with my wife and my daughter. So that's the, that's the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So uh, Larry, um, uh, uh, Mike, uh, uh, Rich and uh, Rich used up most of the time. So you got 30 seconds. Let's go. <laughs> okay. See you later, guys. I just want to point out nobody's wearing their badge. Okay. Everybody's missing their badge. So you're all in trouble. So shoot, man. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going we're gonna to do the same type of run through with all the scales. I don't have the um, whole lot of O scale with me that the show from the show because that was more of an all scale show they came from. But I'd start out with where did it all start at Bachman and with trains with Plasticville? Um, we still have a really strong line of kits. You know, here's one of the uh, O scale frosty bar kits that you can use for your layout. A lot of the you know, people that set up a traditional layout use the Plasticville. You can detail them up with paint and figures and all that as well if you want to go a little bit more um, high tech and uh, blends in with the scenery well. So the first thing I have up for O gauge is our 70 tonner. We got the Tropicana unit here. And we have that available in four different road names. And we'll see if I can do a shared screen here like everybody else is doing. Okay, there we go. So I have, uh, we have coming in Southern Pacific, Canadian National, and there's the Tropicana again. And the Rutland. And all these just came in stock. Right. They're, they're in stock. They come with uh, True Blast Plus, which has horn, bell, and uh, motive power. And um, it has the, the suggested retail is $429.95 for the, um, that locomotive. So um, we do have some other stuff we're working on right now, but I don't have it ready for announcement until probably the fall of York. So. Okay. And so the majority of our business at Bachman is, well, first of all, I wanted to say we do have our catalog ready and out there. And um, it, it is available with hard copy at your retailers or you can just go to our website, click on the top uh, catalogs and brochures, and you can download a, or browse the copy online if you'd like. So all the new stuff's in there. I do have a few new paint schemes that I'll be showing here tonight um, for the I'll start out with a new product we just announced last year. It's starting to come in stock now. One of the first things is um, our Decapod in HO. I have that sample right here. Really nicely detailed Spectrum locomotive. This has, it's equipped with WOW sound, VCC, um, an incredible amount of uh, recordings in there. The realistic thing they use the um, first time they use the thing called Chuffinity. It's, uh, it, it varies the chuffing rate and sound and volume and uh, intensity so that it's very realistic. It, they said it usually won't repeat itself. It's got like a thousand different types of uh, samplings of the, of the chuff. So it'll increase in intensity as it's under load or if it goes up a hill, if it's drifting or going down a hill, it'll decrease in intensity. The whistle um, and the bell are all selectable. We have a, a, a very large number of whistles and bells to choose from. Um, used a really nice speaker in this as well. It's called a mega bass speaker. Um, so it's it sounds great on your layout. Um, so I can show you the, the road names that that's going to be in. And that comes in. Comes in Santa Fe, Erie, Frisco. It comes with the extra doghouse on the tender. Western Maryland. And finally, undecorated, if you notice, there's no boiler front on the front. It comes with a variety of extra parts, bells, um, stacks, and backup lights, so you can make it prototypical to your railroad and letter it however you like. So that's it for that. Now, Larry, you said the Spectrum line 
that's your most detailed engine. It's your top of the line, correct? Correct. And the details and functions as well. It has the full, full sound in it. Um, like I said, it's the wow sound, full package in there. And um, that's usually the detail level is everything starts out with spectrum. It, it also helps our other lines as well. The because um, once we find better technology or better motors or something, we use it in our regular line as well. So not everything is labeled spectrum, but we do have uh, the charger is probably one of our most anticipated products coming out um, later this year. It should be out probably August. It's got pushed back like you know, a little bit because of the Corona situation. With, Very nice. Um, there's there's a picture of the front. I can, I'll show a demo of it a little bit later with the, the lighting features and all that on the back table I have set up here. But it, it comes in four four road names or four paint schemes, three road names. This is without a doubt the number one selling engine that I think we've ever sold. We got more orders for that than any other engine. It's it's spectacular this thing. So it'll be in two Amtrak Midwest versions. We'll have um, two different numbers. Each of the number will have a different destination board on the front. One will, I think one says Chicago and one says Pontiac um, for the, on the front of the locomotive. That actually lights up. I can show that later on as well. This area here is, is iconic with the, um, the lights up, the, the work area. We have set this up so that you can turn that on or off. Um, this, this locomotive has 10 lighting features, which I think is more than anybody's ever done in a production locomotive. Um, we have the strobe lights, we have the emergency strobe, we have the ditch lights, we have the headlights, we have the marker lights, and we have the number boards, all independently controlled. Um, so it's pretty, pretty nifty how everything works. The sounds, we actually went out to um, Colorado and we're at the TTCI testing facility. I got to spend two days on these, one of these locomotives, getting all the um, detailed photographs and all the sounds were recorded. We spent a day and a half recording the sounds, every, every sound the locomotive makes. The, um, prime mover, the traction motors, the uh, blowers. There's a, a ton of blowers on here to cool the locomotive down. And um, even an emergency brake sequence, um, which, which is activated with the DCC. If you, you kick on the e-brake or if you uh, press your brake button five times on the, your control system, it'll come to a stop, halt, the red light will flash and you hear the air dump of the uh, emergency braking situation there. So a um, couple things we got in, I just got in recently or we, we've done really well with last year. We came out with um, test weight cars or scale test cars. So, so this is something that's pretty unique on a, on a railroad. They usually have them at the depots and, and so they can test the weight of the scale and make sure it's act, test the scale to make sure it's accurately weighing the, the trains going in and out of the yard. Um, you don't see a whole lot of them around. There's usually a couple per railroad. So what we've decided to do is we're doing, um, we did a, I think five road names last year. We probably added four this year, but if you see it, you better buy it because I, don't think we're going to repeat them that often, if, if at all. Um, so I can show you the road names we're doing this year. It's uh, going to be, we got Santa Fe, Milwaukee Road, and this one's New York Central, and Pennsylvania. So those will be the four. They, they retail, suggested retail on those is $41. And those are really neat. Thanks. Actually, I scaled out their made their diecast, um, so they'll you know track well on the track, but they they close, close to scale weight of eighty thousand pounds. So I I um, did the ratio down. It's but it's, it's very close to the actual weight. So next item I have up is um, let's see. We have oh, I'll show you a couple. For the ACS sixty fours last year we did. Some new road numbers this year. This is the SEPTA 905. Beautiful. And let's see. The one it's everybody's anticipating is the mobility scheme. Um, well, it's the 602. This was on the rails when they were testing the ACS 64s for the, the beginning of the service. So 
it's got all the cities um, and the route, routes where they made your stops on the Northeast corridor. It's got um, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, and Boston on, on the side of the car right there. So. And finally, we're doing another uh, road number on Amtrak. That's the 668. So we'll continue to rotate the road numbers on this locomotive each time we do new ones. Um, one of the things we got, I dropped one of my samples here. Mm -hmm. We got the poultry car. And this was a, always a popular O scale item. Um, people thought they were fantasy, but they actually existed. They're, they they used them for to transport chickens and pigeons and turkeys. And we did this. We're doing this one in four paint schemes. So, mm -hmm. I'll show you those poultry car. There's one version, another version. A lot of these were privately owned, so they'll see different labels on them. We'll probably add more as we go along. You see the, the um, effect was created. This was actually, this car was molded in clear. And then inside there's a, uh, there's a graphic of the chicken that's inside of the car. I can, if you can see, it's printed on, on just a piece of cardboard there. And then the, the rest of the graphics were painted on top. So it's, uh, it gives the 3D effect of the chickens being inside the car. So they uh, retail for $49, suggested retail. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got the, um, we're doing the end of train device on a lot of our HO rolling stock. This is one example of the new ones we're doing. We did the 50 foot outside brakes box cars last year. This year we're doing the Cylindrical grain hopper. Um, I've got a little video showing you how that works. It's track powered, works. Um, we also sell it in kit form. I'll show you that you can easily attach to any. Um, I'll show you the look of the there's the paint schemes that comes in it comes in the Canadian grain hopper red uh, Saskatchewan grain corporation um, the red oxide Canadian national and black Canadian Pacific and script a lot of people like those end of train devices, Larry. Really, yeah, they sell really well, well. I think we've, I mean, we sell them as a kit form too, which just comes with the truck. Yep. So basically, all you have to do is a truck and then um, unscrew your existing truck. It works directly with any Bachman of this roller bearing type truck. Um, you may have to do some slight modifications to use another another brand. And then the actual end of train replaces your coupler. It comes out of your coupler pocket on your car. And this just goes in there. Uh, it has two little wires that go to it. And again, it's uh, track powered, so it's easy to, you don't have to worry about batteries or anything. So um, one of the things we always like to add to is our easy track line. We have, this last year we came out with lighted bumpers. You have the two versions. We have them in uh, the steel alloy black red bed and the sil nickel silver uh, gray. I can show you the pictures of those up close on the uh, screen here. There's the black and there's the gray. And also there's a little video. Very nice, very nice. There's the blinking effect on the It's only a four second video. Can you make that uh, video larger? Because we, we only see the, uh, the document uh, page. You may have to share the video. Uh, 
page see. on it. Sort of screen. And is that, uh, is that better? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, very good. Very nice. Yeah. This is also good, you know, you, if you, some people still operate blocks and uh, sidings, and if you don't have power on, the, um, if you have power on it, you can actually see if it's, uh, um, you know, if it's lighted, lit, lit up, and it'll show you there's power on that particular siding. Now, Larry, that kit that you have, will that only fit Bachman cars, or could that, um, some people had some questions. I'm not sure if it will only work on Bachman cars or not. It depends on the mounting method. You may have to use a washer or something to screw it to your car, but it should work. Cool. Um, you know, the only ones I know that could be a little bit of a challenge is a, like a really large, like an 85 foot car or something like that, where the trucks aren't right next to the coupler pocket, then you would have to extend the wires as well. So, right. Uh, right. Um, I'm really jealous. I'm watching uh, Andy and Rich there join their beer soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting thirsty as well, guys. They, yeah, they, yeah. they may have to ship some to New York. <laughs> so, okay. So let's see. We just got a few. Uh, these are in the catalog this year. Um, they're new track cleaning cars. Cool. Um, and there are 40 foot reefers. We make three different track cleaning cars in HO. They have this articulating mechanism on the bottom that will follow the curves of the track and it um, the pad is replaceable. You can take it out and clean it or once it's worn out, you can buy replacement pads. We did, we did three different types. We do the, this 40 foot wood side box, um, reef, reefer car. We have a 40 foot box car and we also have a 40 foot single dome tank car. So you can kind of mix it up. You don't have to have the same cleaning car on every um, part of your layout or every consist that you're doing. And these graphics came out really nice, I think. So I'll give you a share on these. Yeah, everybody could use a track cleaning car. Sure. And like I said, we do sell replacement um, pads as well. You can, somebody said you can run them through the dishwasher. I don't know if that works or not. But uh, <laughs> hey, Larry, how come they don't make it an O gauge? Nobody makes an O gauge track cleaning car. You're, no, you're wrong about that. I've seen a few. Yeah. Um, but, we we don't. You're right. Uh, so that's 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 an idea for the product uh, team. There's this this one you just saw, and there's the um, the last. So those three will be out there in the catalog. You, if we haven't. You'll see them if you look in the catalog. I just got them in the other day to review the graphics. So um, turned out really nice, I think. So let's see what else we got here. Um, H O H O. By the time we get to Lionel, Rich and Andy are going to be drunk. Yeah, they're going to have this. <laughs> second one. I'll tell you a little bit what we do as far as start out with a product. Um, I have one of my samples I just got in the other day. So when we start a project, we always start to do research first. And here's an example of our – we're doing a 262. Um, oh, Wow. Or the Pacific engine this year with our, you know, so start out with that. And then we take our existing tooling. What scale? This is HO. HO. It's all doing on the HO, right? And then this is what we work on. We, we design a artwork sheet that shows what we have to do, how to decorate the item. And then um, finally, they send the, the body shells to review. So I just got these the other day. So that's the... That's how the project projects work, you know. It's all very cool. Research, you do the development part, which in this case was just artwork, um, but it's a three-step process. So something like this usually takes a month or two. You know, we're doing a locomotive; it takes it can take a year or longer when you're doing it. this. Charger has been a um, pretty complex project with all the functions that we're incorporating in it. So it's. Um, had a couple challenges as far as the see-through vents and things of that nature. So it took a while. Um, I think that. Uh, how, how long does it take from like say start to finish to when you dream up something to it's actually made? Usually at least a year. It's usually takes longer than that. Usually two years. And we have we have our production. We have our ideas of the products that we're going to do in the future set out several years in advance. And then some things sometimes they get push back because of 
setbacks and other times you could pull forward. The charger, as far as the tooling process, um, went pretty quickly because we, we teamed up with Siemens and they shared their engineering drawings with us. So we basically just had to scale it down and um, make accommodations for the model to operate. Yeah. And some things you can't scale down 100% like the, the um, thickness of the outside walls. It would be like an eggshell and crush when you pick it up because it'd be too thin. So there's certain things you have to make accommodation for. The, the curves, um, you have to make so that the, you've got enough pivot on your trucks um, so that you can do model railroad curves, not realist and not realist realistic curves. Most people have very tight co curves on their model um, railroads. One of the um, HO item we have here is our high cube box car. We just retooled this. Um, it used to be a molded in door. Now we have a sliding door. Uh, we went to a body mount coupler. So this, is, this has been revised from our last production, which was probably 15 years ago, last time we made this item. So uh, turned out pretty nice. We have this in four road names. Go. We got Santa Fe, Burlington Northern, Rio Grande, Red Oxide, and Union Pacific. You notice there's two different door types um, that we also incorporated with the model. And uh, Larry, just want to mention, because uh, a lot of people are uh, talking about it, uh, Bachman does have Owen 30. They are probably the biggest in the Owen 30 industry. Uh, we sell a ton of Owen 30 product of theirs. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> they're, they're edging a yawn. <laughs> okay. Well, we're getting there. I have uh, two more items in HO to talk about, and then we'll go on to okay. going 30 and then end scale and large scale. So um, one other thing we add an easy track line is a, is a bridge. Um, it just plugs in. It's got the clips. So it's a lot easier to incorporate in your railroad. We have two of them now. We have the one with the light at this, um, the light on top with a flashing light. And then this one is the, a girder bridge. Um, so just, it's a lot easier than our, we used to have just the bridges in stock, but you'd have to cut the clips off. And now it's just snaps together. It's ready to go. So um, one final thing is a lot of people start out with a starter set and you get an HO starter set, you get your track. Sometimes you get a, a turnout. Sometimes you don't. Then you start adding to your railroad and you put turnouts in it. And then you say, Hmm, it'd be nice to run more than one train on the track at the same time. So then you go to DCC. Um, so you've already built your railroad, you got your switches on your railroad, and now you've decided to go to DCC. Well, we've, we've come out with a solution for HO for that is to, uh, we have this trackside decoder. Just wanted to explain it a little bit. It comes um, with power connections on the bottom and then, the, oops, dropped it there. And then the uh, this will go to your switch. It's, it's easy, it works with easy track by just popping the tabs off and plugging in the existing plugs, but you can also solder and use other manufacturers uh, switches as well. So this basically sits as a structure next to your switch track. And then you use the top little button there, the program it to the switch that you want it to be. And then you're using it on your DCC system instead of manually flipping the switches for each one of the switch tracks. So you can set up, once you incorporate that in the DCC, you can set up routes um, to automatically you know, put a train to a certain position on your layout or whatever. So it's, uh, this, these are coming in stock soon. I just got the production sample the other day. So we should be seeing them relatively soon. So need a, it needs a little bit of explanation. It's, just, it's not self-explanatory item. Um, so that, that wraps up HO. I'll go do some demos in a little bit in the back table there, but we got the ON30 we're talking about. This is a World War I trench locomotive. We Baldwin built this um, Baldwin built this locomotive and shipped a, a ton of these over to France. They this was the um, ad, this was the builder photo. It was a little more fancy than some of the other ones. It has the white walls and the white lettering. Later on, they were um, lettered with black lettering, and they didn't bother to put the white walls on. They had, more important things to spend the money on in the war, war service then. So, so I'll show you the, we have there, we have, that comes in five paint schemes. And this one also is, 
comes with wow sound and the Chuffinity technology as well. So this has the varying um, Chuff sounds. This is actually the first locomotive we worked on that had that. And then we also incorporated that into the um, Decapod in HO. So there's one of the USA as in service. And then there's- yeah, Larry, you may have to share the, uh, the correct screen. Um, we just see the folder screen. You may have to show, uh, approve the, uh, the other screen. Is that better? You got it. Okay. We'll start from the beginning. There's the as delivered scheme or the builder's photo. And we have two numbers of the uh, USA with the black lettering. Then they were repurposed and brought back to the United States by the military and also private industry. We, we also did a painted on lettered um, black black painted on lettered. So you put your favorite logging railroad or mining railroad on it. So very good. This is very popular. When you came in, we had took a lot of back orders for that and we're still taking orders for it. It just, good. Uh, I'm out of one of them, and I got more on back order with you. No, we have we have them still in stock. This is um, one thing you notice on this locomotive. You normally get a front and rear headlight that you can control, but these were oil lamps, so they were on all the time. So once you when you get your locomotive, they're both going to be on. They're going to be the same intensity, um, and this comes with a water hose that goes on the back. Um, it's, that's the way they filled up the boilers in service when they were using them over there in the trenches. So um, that's what we have for O130. Let's see what else we got here. We got on the N scale now. N scale. So we got our, we re reissued our EM1 in N scale with Econami. Um, it's got full sounds. Um, we have, it's b &O locomotive, so it's all b &O paint schemes. We did, we do have two. Let's see. Is the correct one shown on the screen there, Ken? Uh, you're still in the folder. Why is he still in there? I'm a rookie at this, so give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. The EM1s are a beautiful uh, engine and end scale. Very, very big. <laughs> I mean, tremendous engine. So there's a locomotive, and we have two different types of domes. And what's the minimum radius on that? Now you'd have to give me a hard question. I'll have to look at the catalog. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all right. We, we could post back later. Yeah. So they... um. They're selling their suggested retail is $4.99. Um, I'm not sure if they're in stock right now or not, but you know if they're in stock, guys? You have them in stock? Yep. Okay, yeah. good. We had to reorder them. They did very well. Okay, cool. Very good. So that's the EM1. Um, one thing we tooled up for, this is one of our first locomotives at N-Scale we made back in 1970 or 71 or something like that, GP40. Last year, we... The tool was pretty much shot, so we retooled the whole thing. And some people that were observant might have noticed that we put a speaker and whole enclosure in the bottom. So last year we introduced it with sound. We have the uh, GP40 with sound. We have that in a few road names as well. Um, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. So there we go. And there's BNSF and CP Rail, CSX, and Norfolk Southern. So it comes with, uh, like I said, this soundtracks economy value, sound value uh, package. Um, it comes with, I believe, 13 different um, 13 different horns and a few, um, few bells to choose from as well. Let's see what else we got here. N scale, first time there was another cleaning car. We do a, we're doing a 50 foot box car with the cleaning pad on the bottom. 
This one was a little, this one's fixed because we couldn't do the articulation with the longer. It's just a little bit too tricky to keep it on the track. So we went with a spring loaded and does apply pressure to the track as it goes around. That's a good and idea. Then, those will do very well. Yeah. So we have those in a number of uh, roads as well. And are you saving your big end scale announcement for last? A big end scale announcement for last? No, I don't have any more big. In the, uh, yes, any you big do. End. Yes, you do, Larry. Oh, yeah, 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 Come yeah, yeah, on. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, do oh, do I need to drum roll this? Well, I don't know if it's the same thing we're talking about. So. Uh, I, I hope it is. Okay. Hold on. The Thomas in person. There you go. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people commenting. They want to see Thomas. And now you got Percy. And what scale? This is N scale. That is well, N -scale it will yeah. run on N scale track. It does run on N scale track. Now, I, I do have a number of things I was going to show. Let me grab those on the back here. Um, yeah. I, this announcement that you guys have done for N scale is just amazing. Yeah, here's, here's an HO Thomas, and there's an N scale Thomas. We also do it in large scale. I don't have a sample of that with me to, tonight. Um, we also do HO narrow gauge, which this is an HO narrow gauge locomotive. We have three of those in stock right now. Very cool. Barlowe and uh, Rusty and one other guy, Reneas. Um, basically, they run on the same track. This is kind of like the concept with Owen 30. It run, it's narrow gauge. So it runs on N scale track, but this is an HO scale locomotive you can see thomas is much smaller than the, than the scarlowe is here wow. So, wow. but they will run on the same track they're bite bite size thomas bite size thomas um very cool we've got these in recently so I'm just testing them out they're running really well we're happy with that yeah so we, we may have uh, additional announcements at the nmra that's usually when we do our new product announcements um, but Thomas is something we typically will announce with our catalog every year. So. Yeah, Larry, one thing in uh, O Gauge, the uh, easy streets that you guys make with the vehicles as on the roadway, that stuff is pretty good stuff. We do a lot with that, and uh, uh, maybe you can change some body styles, make Thomas yeah, on the roadway. We're working on a number of things. Um, we, have, we did some new paint schemes in the catalog this year. Um, let me pull them up. That is a good selling item for us. I did, unfortunately, I don't have any samples with me tonight of the Easy Street. Uh, so we're doing a, uh, let's see. pardon me while I look it up in the catalog here. We're doing a sheriff car um, and we're doing a black sedan and a red sedan. It's existing body styles. We also have it, um, in the truck style, we have a Hawaiian shave ice truck, an animal control truck, and Rusty's auto salvage tow truck. So there's six new cars coming out in the near future for the easy street. It's good stuff. Sells well that roadway. Nobody else has roadway. No, man. It's uh, one thing. Um, yeah, it's, it does well. It's, we've got the two size curves, 16 and the 21. You can intertwine them together and you can make yourself a you know two-way street going there. So let's see what else we got. Oh, one more thing on end scale after the big announcement there and we have gondolas 40 foot gondolas we did some retooling on this as well and any uh g scale larry i i have a few items here the g scale stuff it's like i said we had the show and um i took the g scale stuff back to philadelphia and the next day they shut us down so <laughs> wow. i couldn't take this stuff back from uh There we go. There's Santa Fe. And we have the uh, Arlington Northern, Pennsylvania, and Rio Grande. Yeah, so I had, I was lucky, like I said, to have all the stuff that from the show that was out in Denver at my house that should be able to show you all this stuff. So, so. All right. Very cool. Lots of products and uh, different scales. I do have the large scale, a few things I'll, I'm going to pardon the uh, shakiness of the screen here. I'll take it back to the 
to the on the table here. I got more products on. So we have. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. 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 We have a good number of uh, starter sets. One of the new sets we got is a big top set for um, Ringling Brothers, and then we have the Strike Force set in HO. Um, that's relatively new, and of course. We got Thomas all the time. That's a really good seller. So you guys, also, we also make some, these are the entry level sets and we also make some sound versions. Sorry about my thumb there. And here's the, for G scale, here's, these are body shells. I don't have the complete units here, but we have a police unit with a flashing light on top. Cool. The fire unit with the flashing light on top. And then we did two other road names, um, Rio Grande. And then the ever popular Santa Fe war bonnet. So very cool. Nice. Egg liners were always very popular and um, I'm glad you guys took over the molding and uh, found it a home. Cool. Yeah. I got the, um, let's see if I can actually tilt down. You know, I think you had a previous video with the, the features of the charger on there when we did Facebook live once before. So yeah, it's not easily to do that with the setup I have here today, but. Anyway, no um, problem. That's uh, pretty much close the show here today. So um, thanks for having us and appreciate the opportunity to show our products. Well, thank you very much, Larry. Um, all your Bachman products, we carry the full line. Uh, they, they do pretty much every scale, G scale, uh, own 30, O scale, N scale, H O scale. We carry it all at trainworld.com. Uh, Larry, you did a great job. We appreciate you coming on. And um, now it's time for Atlas, Jarrett. And uh, Jarrett, we wanted to have you on the other week, but uh, unfortunately, I think uh, things got a little crazy with this virus going on. But uh, how are you doing, Jarrett? We're doing great, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, things you guys are in the heart of it, too, Jersey. Yeah, we are in an area that is pretty hard hit by the coronavirus. Um, the good thing and the bad thing is that we are, uh, Atlas is back with a limited staff. Um, we have about uh, four or five warehouse workers um, that are uh, receiving orders, processing, palletizing, shipping. So we're still uh, we're still in operations, but just in a limited capacity. Um, we're also, you know, everybody in the factory. We have to abide by CDC rules. Everybody has to glove up, mask on. You know, everybody um, you know has to follow the CDC guidelines. We're just trying to to keep everybody safe. I I think you have a little uh, ninja in the back. <laughs> There's a little critter back there. Did you yeah. see that? I'm not sure what's going on back there. Can you say hi real quick? Uh, I don't think she wants to say hi. Okay. <laughs> but, but just on just on a lighter note, just on a lighter. I can't let Rich and Andy drink alone. This is kind of a secret of mine back here. This is how I've been getting through these uh, these COVID times. So I gotta I gotta reach you here. Andy. There you go. <laughs> I can let you guys drink alone. There you go. I don't think that's fair. That looks like seven up. <laughs> there we go. Oh, Larry's got a beer. Where's Ryan's? <laughs> uh, now, now we all got to go up and get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I can pause if you guys want to go get some beers. <laughs> I guess without further ado, I could I could start my spiel. Um, so I wouldn't be doing a good job uh, if I didn't show you guys our new catalog. So this is our new uh, Atlas. It's the rocking <laughs> and stocking in stock catalog from Atlas. And um, basically what this is, it's just everything that we have in stock right now in N, H, O, O scale, all locomotives, rolling stock, uh, track and accessories. So if you're, you're looking for something in stock, it's, it's in here. This thing's 63 pages. Uh, it's chock filled with in stock products. There's 1500 SKUs. There's over 6,000 total pieces uh, that are available for sale. So 
the, the way that you get this is um, uh, you can either um, sign up on our email broadcast list at shop.atlasrr.com um, or uh, you can give me a, a note on Facebook. I have no problem sending you a physical copy. And um, let me see if I have this hooked up. Let's see, speaker view. Oh man, I'm not as savvy as these guys. Let's see. Jared, I think they're taking beers out of the refrigerator. Uh oh, <laughs> my beers back there. <laughs> so, so all right. So I'll. So, some of the products that you'll find in this in stock catalog, there's a few gems. So, this is a O scale uh, F7A. This is a. Um, uh, uh, Rio Grande, it's a three rail powered unit. Uh, we've got these available in the in stock catalog. There's also uh, limited edition models, special runs that we've done for people over the years, uh, Golden Spike Club models. So um, if you're looking for anything in stock and especially hard to find stuff, uh, go to shop.atlasr.com, uh, look for this look for the Elvis on the home page. I can't share my screen right now for whatever reason. Here, look, here we go, here we go. Let's go to, this is what you wanna look for on the home page. It's this uh, Atlas rocking and stocking. Uh, you click right here and you can find whatever scale uh, you're into. If you're into N, H, O, and O, uh, click on it and it's got everything that's in stock right now. And um, yeah, so definitely, uh, definitely check that out. All right. So let's move on to, it would not be a uh, York show if we didn't cover uh, O scale products. So right out of the gate here, I'll show you something that we have coming at the end of May. Um, our shipping container is going to be arriving uh, just at the end of May, uh, beginning of June with these beauties. These are 60 foot uh, train man passenger cars. Uh, these are all based on CNW and CNJ prototypes. Uh, these are very commonly seen across the US and many are actually in uh, tourist service to this day. There's six road names. Um, uh, we got CNJ here. I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. Just bring them up like this. Uh, this is Chicago Great Western. We also have um, Reading, uh, Blue Mountain, and Northern. And there's two road numbers for Lackawanna and Norfolk and Western. Uh, all of these have interior LED lighting. Um, they, there, we have an observation car that actually has a, a, a lighted drum head on the end. There's, it's not on this model, but the observation ones have a, a lit drum head, which is really cool. These are available in three rail and two rail, and there's a 36 inch minimum uh, curve radius uh, for all these models. And they will deliver end of May, beginning of June. And I believe the MSRP is just over a hundred dollars for those. So that is Very nice. um, our O scale products. I'm going to give a, um, you know, equal representation to all the scales that that Atlas has. So I'm going to move on to 11,000 gallon tank cars that we have also arriving on that May um, that May container. I thought that this model was really cool. It's a uh, it's 11,000 gallon. Um, a Dow Chemical of Canada car. You can see the the paint is really cool. It's a, it's a, like a, a green um, with the with the um, with the Canadian maple leaf on it. Uh, it's just a really colorful paint scheme. Normally you see these things and they're just like black, very simple. This was kind of a, a more colorful uh, version. Uh, we're making that in both HO and an N scale. We got the, the baby and the daddy right there, and um, very nice. The 11,000 gallon tank cars are coming in nine different road names. Um, 
uh, all of them feature accurate paint schemes and lettering. Um, on the end, there's actually, it's just a cool detail. The, uh, let's see if I could get up close. There is the individual tank capacity that's on the end of it. I don't know if the camera's gonna yeah. see yeah, yeah. But you can actually, we printed all the individual tank capacities on the, uh, the end of those. So I thought that was just a cool detail. Um, you know, just very finely molded details. They're actually so finely molded. Actually, I, I, I broke this little piece of piping right here. It's just so fragile and finely detailed. Um, but that is our 11 Ks. You and can't return it back to us, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can get a return on that. <laughs> These are, uh, um, the, the HO models are $49.95 and uh, again, a, a made delivery for the um, Someone made a, a funny comment. They like the Dow tank cars better than the Dow stock. <laughs> uh, moving on, we brought in just recently, uh, these actually, I'm not sure if you guys had these on order, Kenny, but they did ship out recently. It's the, the HO SD35s. Yeah. These are really beautiful models. They're available now at fine stores like Train World. Um, these are available as either uh, silver or gold series. The gold series has uh, ESU sound in it. Uh, and these things, I mean, it's amazing the, um, the sound that they get out of it. They have everything from the engine startup to the different notching effects, the compressors, the air brake, horn, bell, literally all the bells and whistles that you could want in very attractive paint schemes. Uh, they come in chassis system that you see here, Conrail, Southern Pacific, Penn Central, Norfolk Western, and uh, Central of Georgia. And these, uh, like I said, are available now. Find stores like Train World, and the silver version is 169 and the gold with sound is 279.95. Very cool. And moving on, I have some N scale models here that are, you may have seen these up in the Springfield show. These are slightly revised. These are uh, all new tooling for, for Atlas. These are N scale GP40 2Ws and uh, all new tooling, um, some really cool features on these things. The late version that you can see here, you know, these details are so small. I don't know if I'm going to do justice by, but if you look, there's actually, this is the late version and they have actual operating ditch lights. And the, so, so the lights are actually going to operate on these models, which is pretty cool for us. It's the first time that we're doing something like that. And um, there's two body styles. Like I said, this is the late version. It's, it's a Canadian national late version and early version. And um, these models were sold to many US regional and short line railroads and they continue um, in service to this day. So these we're looking at since they're brand new tooling, the end of this year, beginning of next year, uh, for the actual shipping, just a product and a project that we're, we're working on. And um, uh, we got a, a 150 for the silver version and 259 for the gold version. So those are uh, two very cool N scale uh, models that we got right there. And I'm not sure, are, Kenny, you guys carry the, uh, the signal system? Do you guys have any... Uh, customers into this the signals i'm not not sure if you guys are into that a little bit yeah a lot, bit. lot of a lot of guys ask for it nice nice so so this is something that is in stock right now and it's available for all scales it's an all scales signal system and we're getting a lot of interest in it um so this is our uh, type G, let's see, the reflection might be nasty. There we go. 
the, this is the, the Atlas all scale signal system. And it's a, it's a type G signal that we've chosen to do. It's commonly seen across the United States. Um, there's three individual LEDs that are inside this with the proper signal colors in the lamp. Um, there's three different configurations available. There is the uh, bi-directional, mm, kind of a lot of glare. There is a single and there's a double stack. And um, this one right here that I have, this is the starter set. This gives you everything. It's the bundle. It's the signal itself. There's a, a universal signal control board and a, uh, a wire that you use to connect the signal to the board. And it's like a one-stop shop for a signal. You could just buy this, drill a hole in the layout, connect this thing to the signal board, and you basically are um, operating signals uh, when you buy this, uh, this bundle right here. And um, this is available now. It's, I believe, $59.95. And um, you, we're doing this for N, H, O, O. And it just makes signaling really easy. And it allows you to add the you know, exciting world of, of signaling you know, to, to your layout. It makes it more you know, prototypically realistic. Do the so signals that, automatically change? Yeah, so what you can do is um, you have to add what's called a detector, and it's 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 basically a just a wire that connects to one of the the rails on the layout. And when the locomotive passes by that detector, the signal will uh, you know indicate the occupancy. That you know, so if, if a, a train is on the track and it it's, it passes by that detector, the signal will show a red light to oncoming trains that are coming the other direction, not to not to um, come through that route. Okay. And um, it's just a really easy way. We, we have a full um, uh, instruction manual, how you set all these up. You can do standalone operation, uh, block detection. You can daisy chain them together and give um, different indications all over your layout. And it's, um, it's just something that you know, is gaining traction and that we're seeing a lot of interest in. So it's just a, a, another cool product that Atlas is putting out. Very nice. Very nice. And let's see what we got next. Okay, I have uh, one last product to present, and it is uh, uh, this is something that is you know we're <laughs> we're all going through this uh, this coronavirus thing right now, and uh, you know everybody you know it, it, it's tough day to day is tough. So uh, this segment you call it you know of, of what i'm talking about is really for the parents grandparents uncles aunts uh, most importantly the kids um, you know times are, are you know tough right now parents are home from work and the kids are home from school you know i got my, my my little ninja that you've seen running around back there and uh, everyone's under one roof and the days are long and uh, you know with us the 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 school day starts remotely at nine ends around, you know, two o'clock. And after that, there's definitely a lot of time to burn before bedtime. And so, um, you know, there's, there's certain things, you know, that you can do to help pass the time, certain products. And, you know, one of the products that Atlas has out right now is uh, our passenger train set, you know. So this passenger train set is a really, really good way to pass the time. And uh, I actually have a uh, special presenter that I'd like to, to introduce you to, if you guys don't mind. Uh, let's see if we can, if the special presenter is available, let's just take a walk let's with see me. it. All right, Kenny, say, say hi to, to my special presenter here. Wow, <laughs> what do you got there? Train. Cool. Yep, you got it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mabel. I like playing with this train set. I've been playing with it for the past two days. Wow. I'm show you how to use. She's gonna show you how to how to use it now, Kenny. Here we go. There you go, right there. This is the 
controller and this is how you she's work gonna, it. She's gonna show you how to use it now. This button is to go. Yes. There you go. Go, if you go forward. There we go. And you press it again. If you go back, you press it again. If you go really fast. And this red button makes it stop. And the backwards button, you press it. Go backwards. So we got forwards and backwards. And press it again. Go really fast. Press it again. Go really fast. Show them the horn. Very cool. And then, yeah, do, do, and the, do the horn. And then, um, you hold this button. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you click this button once. So we got the bell. And you press this button once. And then the all aboard announcement. Bye. <laughs> Very good. Good presentation. Very good. Is that battery or electric? That, that, so that's all battery powered and uh, it's, it's HO compatible. So the cool thing is, you know, if you have a layout at home, uh, grandparent, dad, mom has a layout at home, you can actually run that train you said it had it's ho compatible wheels it can run on your home layout so you can kind of introduce your, your your kid who's you know an aspiring model railroader you know now they can take that toy put it on the layout and kind of get the feel of running running the train around the layout themselves your your daughter's name was maple was it Maple, yeah, just just like a just maple syrup, maple. <laughs> very cute, very cute. I want everybody out there to give some great uh, feedback and thank Maple for a great presentation <laughs> because uh, we think she's going to be the future representative at Atlas. I think she's going to take <laughs> over for you, Jarrett. <laughs> I think she might. I think she might. She'll dethrone me. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So, so we have a, uh, a special offer this, you know, the, the Atlas train set right now, uh, I'm not sure about the future, is uh, available just through atlastrainkids.com. Uh, and if you go there now and enter uh, the coupon code YORK, uh, we'll give you free shipping. Uh, so uh, check out Atlas Train Kids, atlastrainkids.com. Uh, enter YORK, get your free shipping. and um uh kenny this has been uh great uh, uh i definitely um think it was very valuable to do this and uh i, I appreciate you having me on thank you jared and uh that's great because we need to get all these kids who are home and uh just really need some activity to get them into the the hobby and start them off with the train set so so that's great and uh your, your daughter is unbelievable she did a great job and hopefully she uh remembers this so uh <laughs> thank you very much for for being on but you forgot to talk about the racks to the max the auto carriers that just came in and <laughs> ho the, those auto racks are beautiful i mean i i I'm pretty sure I wiped you guys out uh, when, when Drew let me know uh, what, what you guys had left. And um, I, I just wanted everything. They were just unbelievable, really nice. So uh, I wish I had a, a car here to uh, present here. But, I, I, but uh, next time we'll, we'll do something on that. But uh, thank you very much, Jared, and we appreciate that. And um, uh, now next up, uh, another big guest. I mean – Let's talk about the titans of the industry, MTH, Lionel, Bachman, uh, and Williams, uh, Atlas. I mean, just a wonderful lineup. And right now we have Ryan Kunkel of uh, Lionel Trains. And Ryan, you better start shipping out some Lionel Ale to all of these uh, uh, wonderful presenters up here. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think there's definitely a, a, a an ale theme in the uh, York presentation tonight. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hold off until until after we get through, and then I, I think there's a uh, a nice glass of scotch waiting for me uh, when well, this is all said and done. 
you you better tell Howard to ship everybody here, uh, Lion LL, on the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for uh, for having having everybody on. Um, well, while Jared was talking, I took an opportunity and called Animal Control so they can come out to Larry's house and take care of that thing that's uh, hanging out on this back wall there. Um, <laughs> I think it's trying to sell him some car insurance or something, and uh, I want to get that taken care of for him. <laughs> uh, do have a couple of things I'd like to uh, show with you tonight. Uh, we'll run through a variety of things that we have going on here. I'm going to try and share the screen. Uh, this is a bit of a PowerPoint thing, so hopefully this uh, comes through fine for you uh, and you'll see the whole, uh, whole presentation. Try and do this here. F5 just works, but that's not, there we go. You seeing that uh, all right over there, Ken? Yep. Okay, so uh, not too long ago, uh, you and I got to sit down and talk. Um, hear about our new HO release. Uh, we came out to this in the in March. Orders are due on these products here in just another couple of weeks at the start of May, so that we can get these in production and on their way to delivery uh, this year for everybody. Uh, I know this is still, it's a York crowd, so it's mostly an O-Gage crowd, and I won't labor too long on, on the HO product, but uh, close to 100 new products in this release, more still in the works uh, to come in the very near future. But we've got uh, lots of great product in here, uh, including another new locomotive. Uh, this is based on the old Mantua tooling, the Mikado. This will have DCC and our Lionel Lion Chief Bluetooth system on board. So you can run it with the uh, DCC control. You can run it with conventional power supply. You can run it with uh, the Lion Chief remote or the Bluetooth app. So you, you can actually um, use our universal remote or you can go in and use the download the free app and run this uh, with your phone or tablet. Uh, either Apple or Android devices are supported on that. Uh, works the same off the same devices as our uh, O and S gauge trains. So if you already have a variety of scales, you can mix the scales and, and use the same controller on all of them very easily. And if you're a DCC user, you don't need to do anything. You've got a decoder in there already. Uh, just switch over to track signal and it will pick up the DCC signal right away and run just like every other DCC locomotive you're used to. Uh, so you have the opportunity to do both. You can also run this, by the way, uh, with Bluetooth control on a DCC layout using the Bluetooth. We've done this at uh, some club shows that I do uh, with our, our local train club. And it's nice. We can take uh, one of our Polar Express sets and put it on the layout and hand the kid the remote control and let them run the train. And uh, it's a lot nicer than uh, having to hand them a, a Digitrax cab or an NCE power cab or something like that. Uh, a much, much easier uh, kid-friendly version uh, for that. So in addition to the locomotive, a whole lot of different pieces of rolling stock, ore car six packs, uh, more traditional uh, types of, of models for, for the uh, beginner or for the, uh, the entry level modeler, uh, built up building kits, uh, building kits and kit form, uh, figures, lighted accessories, etc. So you can uh, see all these great things at lionel.com. If you go to the main page there, you'll see the header for all this product. Just click right in there in the spring release and see everything that is to come. Uh, and there's more HO on its way to us here in the very near future. Uh, our factory is building our HO right now uh, is about halfway filled with the container. And then you'll start uh, filling the rest of that up with some of the rolling stock that we cataloged last year. And that should be on its way to us soon. Uh, don't have a new um, catalog for the O-Gage guys right now. As, as the O-Gage world knows, we're sort of right in the middle of our catalog cycle. Uh, April York sort of falls right in that that uh, Valley Forest between volume one, which came out in January, uh, and those products have, have been ordered and are into the production schedule now. And then our volume two catalog usually comes out uh, towards the uh, beginning or middle of July, uh, right around NMRA show time. So I'm sure we'll have a lot of new product to talk about then. Uh, I, may get, uh, I may get yelled at for doing this, but the catalog is, is really far along in, in production. Uh, we're in great shape with it right now. The team has been doing an outstanding job. Uh, a lot of them, you know, working remotely, working from homes, but communication back and forth and our volume two catalogs coming together. We've reviewed the first drafts. Uh, looks amazing. And we're, we're ahead of schedule on that, uh, which is which is good for everybody to know. I'm going to break some rules and I'm going to show some previews of what's in that catalog. So uh, we're going to run through this real quick. 
So I hope that uh, you got your pause button ready uh, on the screen there. But there's, as you can see, there's a lot of great product in here, some exciting road names, great new features on, uh, on things. We've got scale locomotives and rolling stock. We've got traditional items. We've got new accessories, a whole lot of great stuff in there. And I've, I'm sure you've, you've all captured that, and, uh, and I, I've let all the caps out of the bag. Um, I want to do focus, though, however, on some of the things that we have on the way to you now. Um, it's always great to come on and talk about what's up and coming, but we've been putting a lot of uh, catalogs out there over the last couple of years, and there's product in the pipeline, and I want everybody to know that our factories are all hard at work, and things are shipping and, to us, and will be shipping from us. We've received our uh, train container in a couple of weeks ago uh, and turned that around, and we've got uh, two or three more on the water right now with a couple more uh, inbound as well. These uh, shots you're seeing here on the screen, this is our uh, O-Scale EM1. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger than the one that uh, Larry showed earlier. Uh, these were featured in the Volume 2 catalog last year. These are the uh, production, uh, first production deco shots uh, from the factory. And uh, these will be finished up here in the next couple of weeks and on their way uh, to us uh, probably about the first week in May uh, out of the factory there. So two of the different variations here, we've got the VNO version, of course, and then we've done a lot of uh, fantasy schemes on these with some detail changes and whatnot. The uh, DM and IR uh, deco scheme is shown there as well. One of the more colorful options, it's got the uh, air pumps on the smoke box uh, and the, the, the gray painted boiler and so forth. We also do two different tender variations on these locomotives, uh, the, the traditional B&O style tender, and then for some of the Western road names, the uh, centipede style tender, uh, like you see behind the challengers of the big boys, et cetera. Uh, so you'll have those different uh, details to look forward to. These operate off of our legacy system as well as uh, Bluetooth. These are Bluetooth enabled, so you can run them with the universal remote or the app as well, uh, which, is, which is really nice. Also uh, on its way to us right now, these should be arriving here in the next couple of weeks, uh, a number of our 21 inch passenger cars. Uh, we had a lot of great orders for these last year. These are some uh, decorated deco shots. The Union Pacific Walter Dean sample there is an early deco shot of just the shell, obviously. Uh, that, that image looks a little faded on my screen, um, but we, we, we've been doing a lot of work back and forth with the factories this year on photographs and deco chips and samples back and forth far more than we've done uh, in the past. Uh, to make sure that uh, things are, are moving smoothly. You also see picture there, two of the Alaska Railroad passenger cars uh, from, from those sets. We did a four pack, a two pack, Station Sound Diner, and then a Vista Vision dome car. So you can do the complete train along with uh, F7 locomotives to pull it. The, uh, the baggage car here is the generator car. It's got the exhaust stacks on the roof for the generator. This will have generator sounds on board uh, for the HEP power for the train. Uh, and then as I said, you've got the full featured cars. So you've got LED lighted cars. All of our passenger cars have a capacitor on board. So you have flicker free lighting, which is very nice. The Station Sound Steiner features legacy control of all the sound functions. Uh, so you play station stops along the route. Uh, you'll hear the different voices, the different train names, uh, people boarding the train and so forth, diner, dinner being served and different courses and whatnot. Uh, a real, real fun piece to add to, to your consist. And then uh, we also have our Vista Vision dome cars, which are a really great piece that have a Wi-Fi camera mounted up in the Vista dome. So you have the best seat in the, in the train. As you travel around your layout, you get a, a view out over the train ahead uh, and, and your railroad as you, as you roll along on board, board your own passenger train, which is a really cool feature. Uh, I look forward to seeing a lot of uh, videos of those popping up on YouTube as people record their layout from a, a passenger's perspective. So the Alaska passenger cars, uh, the first round of the UP passenger cars, as well as uh, I believe there are some Norfolk Southern uh, executive train cars uh, in this batch that are on the next container coming in. Uh, so you have those to look forward to in the not too distant future uh, at Train World. Uh, the George Bush train set is an one, another one that I know people are very anxiously awaiting uh, the arrival of. That was a, a huge seller for us last year. And uh, those cars are in production right now. Uh, the locomotives are finished. Uh, and as soon as the cars are finished, they'll be on a container. I believe May 15th or 17th is the ship date for that container uh, out of China on its way over here to us. So you'll be seeing those probably a uh, early July uh, from shipping timeline uh, perspective. And hopefully by then the rest of the supply chain will be open for business as well. And we'll be able to get those out to you in a hurry when they, when they show up. 
on the same container as the passenger cars, we have our Lion Master SD80 and SD90s. Uh, these are a, a great little locomotive that has these sort of look and feel of a, a scale engine, but all compressed just enough in size to make it operate around an 031 curve. So these will do uh, well on the smaller layouts with the tighter curves, uh, nice modern power. These feature our Lion Chief 2.0 technology, which is a new board that we introduced last year. It incorporates not only our Lion Chief uh, Plus level of product with, with Bluetooth control, but also the ability to uh, run these with TMCC command control on board. So not full legacy, but you can run these with your Cab 1 or Cab 2, uh, as well as the universal remote, as well as, of course, your conventional transformer. So you have all your different power and control options. Uh, I believe we did two different road numbers per engine on these, if I remember correctly. Uh, and these are all uh, on their way here and should be available uh, by the end of May at, at Train World and, and uh, other Lionel dealers around. So these are uh, production shots of the Deco shells, uh, obviously not the completed units here, but uh, give you a sense of the Deco on these, these, uh, these models. Uh, and they turned out very nicely. For our, uh, our train set crowd, um, we've got a lot of sets in production right now. There's a lot of things I'd like to show you, but due to licensing restrictions, I can't show the previews of some of our Disney sets and, and other things. Uh, out early. So we're going to uh, show one of the, the highly anticipated uh, non-licensed set. This is our, our Strasburg Railroad set. Uh, this will be uh, in, this is in production right now and also will be shipping uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, they're in, in final assembly on these now. These are earlier deco samples. We did the uh, current paint scheme on the passenger cars uh, as well as, uh, as I think this was the early 2000s paint scheme that, that 90 wore uh, before the got redecorated into the uh, Great Western inspired scheme. Uh, so this will be on our Lion Chief 080. Um, a, a good friend of mine and a, a longtime conductor and historian of the Strasburg Railroad did the uh, announcements on this. So we have snippets from the official uh, Strasburg Railroad uh, train ride. Uh, so you'll, as you play the crew talk, you'll get to hear uh, a familiar voice and uh, familiar uh, quotes from along the, the route. Uh, so I'm giving a big, big shout out to my friend Kurt on that uh, for, for helping out there. Uh, one more little bit of authenticity that we can add into the set uh, and, and have some fun with it. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of good Strasburg product coming from us uh, in the traditional and also uh, not too distant future in the o, o scale line uh, as well. On the uh, next shipment after that, we'll have our legacy SD38s got a couple different uh, shells being shown here now. The decoration on these is nearly complete uh, and they'll be starting in on final assembly of all the uh, subcomponents and so forth and to build up complete units. Uh, the SD38 is a, a neat locomotive, uh, often overlooked. And this is one that when we tooled the SD40 uh, about ooh, five years or so ago now, uh, we set out on a project that would allow us to get multiple uses out of that tooling. Uh, using similar components, we built the SD40, SD38, and SD45. Um, in this case, we've got the SD38 coming back again. These were found uh, a lot of times in uh, hump yard service or in heavy drag freight service. So you found them on a lot of the iron hauling roads as well as uh, Penn Central bought them for hump yard service. And uh, then they made their way all through, way through to CSX and Norfolk Southern. Uh, as well as Union Pacific had some, and uh, they're in some uh, leasing groups as well. We have a uh, the GATX one there uh, pictured was a custom run that we did for one of the clubs. Uh, as as you guys have taken advantage of at Train World, we like to do custom products for people uh, from time to time. Uh, that that paint scheme turned out real nice, so I thought I'd uh, slide that uh, little deco shot in here as well and give everybody a sneak peek. These will be on their on the water uh, mid to late May and then uh, on their way over here. So again, probably an, an early July uh, timeframe on the arrival for these locomotives as well. Uh, F7s will be uh, right on the heels of that. We're also doing the final uh, decoration on these now, and then uh, these are going into assembly. So these should also be leaving in May. As you can tell, the factories are really cranking a lot out. There were a lot of different road names on these. Uh, I don't have them all pictured here. Uh, I just grabbed a few highlights of some of the more uh, colorful units, uh, including the Penn Central uh, X Rio Grande B unit uh, that we have there, uh, Cotton Belt, Alaska, uh, Norfolk Southern. A particular note for the Norfolk Southern units, uh, we did uh, do some new tooling on these. 
These will have the HEP details on the roof. And as you see there in those, uh, the front end of this has been redesigned to accommodate the changes that Norfolk Southern had made on those locomotives. So you'll have uh, the recessed ditch lights. We took the nose off of the door off of the nose. So you have the, the, the rounded smooth uh, nose profile there. They'll have the, uh, the handrails on it, but, uh, but no door molded in. Uh, so, but you have the recesses for the MU connection and the operating ditch lights. So that's a, uh, the first time that's been done in O scale. And, and I think in any scale, to my knowledge, where the, the, uh, the detailing has been done. And of course, we got all that stuff done just in time for NS to sell the units off and, and, and get rid of them. Uh, but that's OK, because that means there'll be some more paint schemes coming down the road for these uh, in the future. And we'll get, get some more use out of that tooling. So uh, it'll all work out, all work out well. Just received uh, yesterday uh, here at home uh, some samples. These are the tooling samples from our disconnect passenger cars. These will be shipping uh, out of China uh, probably midsummer uh, and here late summer uh, delivery. These are some really cute little cars. In fact, I, I had these set up on the uh, the entertainment center down in in the living room, and my wife walked in and and went, "What are those? Those are cute." Uh, so it's, it's just a cute little train. The, the, the whole train of five cars is a, about 15 inches, 16 inches long. Uh, so you can put a, an impressive string of these together on a small layout. They were inspired by our logging disconnect trucks and our logging caboose. We've got five different variations. You've got the baggage car, coach, diner, sleeper, and observation. Uh, with the exception of the baggage that has the closed doors on it, each of the cars has an interior. Uh, and each interior is different, so you have different uh, different details inside. You can sort of see them in the close-up there of the, the dining car. Uh, you've got the table and chairs around that. Um, it's it's sort of a, a family-sized uh, uh, dinner table, uh, but a cute little train. And these were done in Christmas uh, decoration as well as a lot of uh, prototypical paint schemes as sort of a fun little what-if. Uh, these will look great behind traditional-sized or scale-sized uh, O locomotives. Something like our um, our 060 T dock siders, uh, which we announced last year in the Lion Chief Plus 2.0 line, would be perfect power for something like this. Uh, or you can mix and match with, with with whatever favorite little critter you've got uh, that you'd like to have pulling your train around. Uh, these will look wonderful around a Christmas tree or on the dining room table or wherever you care to run it. Just a real fun little train. Threw a few Christmas items uh, in here. Uh, because it's never too early to start talking about Christmas, but also as an opportunity to talk a little bit about our production schedule. Uh, similar to what others have said tonight, we do have a little bit of a delay on, on account of the coronavirus shutting down factories for uh, about a month or so uh, in China. We're making up ground quickly. Uh, right now, we're typically between, uh, on average, maybe four to six weeks late. There's a few projects that are a little bit further behind than that. Uh, but as we've Work the new projects from C1 and the orders from this year into the schedule. One of the things that uh, we've tried very hard to do is arrange the schedule in such a way that seasonal products, uh, dated products, things that need to be here by a certain date don't suffer. So by the time it all delivers, some things may be a little bit longer than eight weeks in a delay, and some things may be may not really show much delay at all from when we initially intended to ship them. Uh, we're, as we move projects around at the different factories, uh, to try and keep this, the production schedule moving as efficiently as possible. So Christmas items and things like that, uh, we didn't want to just slap an eight-week delay on everything across the board. We've moved those to keep them about where they were in production uh, beforehand. So you guys should get all of your Christmas product, your Polar Express product, uh, et cetera, in time for this year's holiday. That's the, that's the current goal and the current plan. As, it's, as it sits now, just about everything on the schedule should be shipping by the end of October, which is about four weeks later than we uh, initially expected or, or hoped uh, was to be our goal this year was to have it all out. Uh, but an, an end of October uh, shipment would still get things here just a couple of weeks before Christmas, uh, as, as you know. So we're in pretty good shape uh, and things, like as I said, are progressing nicely and moving along well. And we hope to maintain our production schedule or improve uh, as we move along. Uh, as we watch it weekly, some things have actually already started to move up a little bit. Uh, which is which is good to see. So we do have a couple of Christmas items. These are uh, decorated samples, uh, production samples that will be uh, on their way here shortly uh, and here in plenty of time for the Christmas holidays. So lots of good things to look forward to uh, coming down the, the road uh, here from, from Lionel. Uh, Want to do a, a quick update on some things going on in engineering. 
Uh, we've got a couple of uh, uh, projects. Dave put this out on our uh, Facebook page a few weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, on our uh, Vision GS uh, steam locomotives. We've got a new steam effect uh, in here, which is plumbed down through the pistons uh, and actually reciprocates with the motions of the, the valve gear to uh, expel the steam uh, effect out of the proper cylinder ports uh, during startup. So I'll, I'll play that video and hopefully this works online here for everybody. Hopefully. For some reason that doesn't seem to want to come up for me. Um, rather, uh, you can go onto our Facebook page and you'll see this in operation. It's a it's a really fun, fun feature. Uh, also featured over here is our smoking reefer. This was featured in the uh, 2020 C1 catalog, uh, a revamp of the earlier uh, car, and uh, a great one to uh, take a look at. Uh, this has both sound and uh, smoke features on board. We've completely redesigned this car from when it first appeared in the Ice Cold Express set a few years ago. Uh, new tooling for the smoke unit and the, the, the smoke fluid fill to make it a little easier to get in there and, and refill this thing. And it'll give you sort of that nice sort of cool air uh, effect drifting out the door uh, as the, the train rolls around and you'll have the sound of the generator in there from the speakers. So uh, our prototypes for that are coming together and uh, that'll be in production later later this year. The GS locomotives, uh, everyone's always excited about our vision product. Uh, those are towards the end of the production schedule uh, as they, they typically are because of the extra amount of work and time that it takes to build them. Uh, we catalog quite a few uh, Southern Pacific locomotives this this year, and uh, so there's a lot of SKUs to build, a lot of different variations. Uh, those will uh, still make the year, uh, and they're on on track right now for probably a late November, uh, early December delivery uh, to uh, to Train World and and other dealers. So uh, keep keep watching on that as we make more progress with the development uh, and have more videos to show. We'll put those up on our social media sites, uh, let you, you keep uh, watching along and, and seeing things as they develop. Uh, so there's a lot of great things happening uh, behind the scenes at uh, at Lionel. And once you enjoy, oh, Ken Sr.'s got me here. He's got the, uh, the video lined up uh, up there from our, our Facebook page. So. So the, uh, the audio is probably muted on that, which is fine. We're still tuning the audio to keep all the sounds uh, perfectly in sync with, with the, the motion. The motion of the valves themselves is, is timed by the, the piston inside the engine. So they'll always be in, in proper sync with the locomotive, which is really cool. It's the next level in, uh, in features and detail uh, in, the, in the models. You run back in here. I, have, I think I have one more slide to show real quick and then uh, We'll let everybody go back to watching the draft or drinking their draft, whichever the case may be. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, didn't plug National Lionel Train Day. Uh, it'll be December 5th this year. Uh, at Train World will be one of our participants. We have uh, many other uh, local uh, hobby shops uh, who are participating as well. So if you can't make it to uh, train world or train land. Uh, if you have a shop near you, we, this is our, our chance to really encourage you all to go out uh, and support the hobby shop, support our, our dealers, uh, go pay them a visit in person, uh, pick up the uh, special commemorative box card that we put out each year, uh, or also pick up some other good things while you're there as well. Uh, we'll be we'll be needing that support in December, I'm sure, but uh, even right now, as as we all go through this, a lot of places can't be open. Uh, but, you know, especially Train World, you guys do a huge business uh, with, with mail order. Uh, keep those orders coming for them. I know that uh, it presents, a, it's, they're in a, it's a whole challenge to keep up with it, but it does mean a lot uh, to keep those things going and keep the hobby going. There's, there's a lot that we have to be thankful for in this hobby right now to be able to enjoy what we love to do, uh, for the most part, inside without having to get involved in, in the uh, in the, in the world outside the, our own walls. So it's a great hobby to enjoy at home when, when you can't enjoy things uh, outside uh, and, and do that. So uh, a lot to be thankful for as we, we struggle through uh, all of this. 
Yeah, National Lionel Train Day is a huge event that you guys put together, and it's great for everyone, all the retailers across the country. Um, uh, just a great event for the whole industry. So kudos to you guys for putting that together, and it seems like it's an annual thing every year. So It's an annual annual thing every year, and it's gotten bigger and bigger every year. So we, we appreciate all of our, our, our dealers who've participated in that and look forward to continuing that tradition going on. Uh, and as everyone else has said, uh, Ken, thank you to, to you guys for, for leading this. I know we got to give uh, Andy some of the credit uh, for right. his brilliance uh, in, in putting all this together. Um, a lot. I, I, his head can't get any bigger uh, or his neck, but, uh, you know, I, I still <laughs> will, will do the best I can to. <laughs> that is a lot of empty Bud Lights there, that, that uh, was, my friends. That, and that, that I, was I rude, say, I have to say rude. I'm very disappointed it's not a hams. Um <laughs> Well, they don't have hams down here. Uh, no you hams. Get a hams. Well, I, I, I almost went out today and picked up some just for, for the, the York experience uh, to, to be, be proper. But I'll settle for a 16-year scotch tonight instead. Uh, <laughs> I understand. Our, our friend at Ross Custom Switches, Steve Bernice, is very annoyed that we're not drinking his favorite crappy beer. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine Steve has had a few words to say. Yes. Uh, we miss you, Steve. Uh, sorry you... you uh, so we won't get to see you around the around the truck this year. Uh, now, does anyone know how many uh, people actually a attend York uh, for a meeting? Because I'm looking at the the numbers now, and we've reached over twenty thousand people, different people watching these this event. Really? So, um, I that's, mean, that's people, far more than that's far more than what goes to York. Yes, so, so, so <laughs> like we, ten times as many. So we, we want to appreciate and thank everybody joining in, taking the time to attend this event. I mean, uh, York is a huge event, and our numbers for virtual online uh, viewing has just been enormous. And we have these man great manufacturers here to thank for that. Uh, we couldn't do it without them, and we appreciate all of them for joining us, even if they're wearing uh, hideous Hawaiian shirts uh <laughs> but <What>? uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my best shirt <laughs> listen kenny and seriously it uh kudos to you guys it, it was uh thanks for putting this on thanks for keeping the us connected to the enthusiasts out there i'm sure they've had need something to do as well and to get a little taste of york and and whatnot it's uh it's a great thing that you guys did this and we look forward to doing something with you again yeah this is um there isn't too many hobbies that have this type of uh camaraderie in it and friendships and uh, it's like we're all one big family even though you guys are different manufacturers you all hang out together too when you're at the shows and stuff which is a great thing we're all in this together and i want to thank you guys for taking care of the consumer taking care of us and uh you know, just um, the, all the consumers out there, thank you for all your support all these years. And uh, shop at trainworld.com, and uh, we'll supply whatever you need. And Kenny, my son, is doing an amazing job. Thank you very much, Kenny, for, for uh, being part of Train World. Well, I got to thank my father for being on. He always has a, a wealth of knowledge. So th thank you for joining us. <laughs> I like the way he presented that, Kenny, as if you had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. Now, just a, we, I want to go around the horn, just a, a closing segment from each person. And uh, I'll, I'll uh, have Ryan, Ryan, you start from Lionel, just a closing statement. Uh, just thanks again. I hope everybody out there stays well, stays safe. That's everyone's our, our primary concern with everybody right now is that uh, we all just get through this with our health. Uh, happy to report that everyone at Lionel is still doing uh, doing well uh, and no no health scares here uh, and hope that uh, everyone else can say the same. Uh, we look forward uh, to coming back again. Uh, Kenny, I think we'll be back on here and I'm guessing just maybe a couple more weeks with a pretty bigly announcement uh, of a new product right. special that we've got coming out uh, that uh, will be not cataloged, but uh, it'll be huge. 
and uh, I think uh, people will really in enjoy seeing it. And that's that's about as many hints as I can drop uh, drop right now. But thank you all. And uh, this was the best taste of York that didn't involve Scrapple or the smell of a paper mill. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and uh, uh, Jarrett. Kenny, thank you very much for having us, for having Maple and I. Uh, we had a lot of fun tonight. I think she stole the show here, right, Mapes? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, I just want to re reiterate what Ryan said. Just uh, we just want you know our customers, everybody out there, to uh, stay healthy, stay safe, uh, play with play with your trains, have fun, and um, we hope to see you again soon. Uh, maybe maybe this will be the the, uh, the the new venue that we see everybody at um, uh, in the future with the NMRA and, and this this may be the future of uh, of trade shows what uh, you and, and Andy have uh, crafted here uh, may, may be the future so um, thank you and uh, shop at train world thanks Jared. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Uh, Larry final recap just want to say thanks for putting this together. Hope everybody enjoyed the presentations and um, everybody stay safe. We'll hopefully we'll be getting together in October and York and see everybody there. Thank you, Larry. And the dynamic duo. <laughs> thanks, Kenny. On behalf of Andy and I, thank you guys very, very much. And um, I'm praying that everybody out there stays safe and uh, let's get together again soon. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you guys very much. And uh, I'll, I'll give my father the, uh, a final recap before I, I chime in, because I'm sure he has something to say. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, it's been a good experience. It's the first time I'm doing anything like this, and uh, it's uh, not that hard. I thought it, I'm a little nervous. I'm old school. And uh, I think uh, a lot of the train guys out there, you got you to gotta jump in. Jump in, give it a shot, try it, and uh, join uh, join what we're doing. Uh, we're moving forward. You got to keep moving forward on uh, nothing could stop us in our tracks, not even this virus. We keep going. And, the um, again, thank you for all the support of our cu customers. Be safe out there. Um, be uh, responsible. Care about the next guy next to you also. And, um and manufacturer-wise, thank you for working with every dealer out there during this time. I know you're all doing what you can for all of us. And uh, thank you very much. And hopefully, uh, we'll all be able to take shipments back again next month. Well said. And uh, as a final, we just want to say thank you, everybody out there. And we really appreciate everyone for joining us. These numbers were some of the largest in the model train industry. So we really appreciate it. Uh, shout out to the people working on the front lines, uh, doctors, uh, truck drivers, uh, nurses, uh, every, everyone who is fighting this virus. We really appreciate it. And uh, we thank you for putting your lives uh, on the line out there. And um, we hope we provided some a uh, little bit of entertainment for you tonight. And we know you couldn't get to York this year, but hopefully this brought a little life into York uh, for you. And again, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Shop online at trainworld.com. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Be safe and God bless, guys. Mm -hmm.